lives on again for one night only and potentially more. 560 career appearances as the whistle blows tonight for Sasha Kleshin, and we're underway at J. Sarah Catholic High School. A little bit of pace on this as well. Kleshin, top of the box to the back post. Top of the six, rather. Not a bad service. That's what you expect from him. Part of the fun of talking with Sasha Kleshin today. I asked him if he was excited to play in front of his children again, and he had to explain, well, the stadium, they may not be as fancy as some of the other ones he used to play in. And also, he said his daughter asked, well, Daddy, you're on 99 career MLS assists. If you get an assist today, will that be 100? And I explained, no, sweetheart, it's, it, it will be an assist. It will count, just not towards that. So I'll tell you what, though, if he plays well enough tonight and he feels it, I'm sure somebody, as Harmon goes for a goal, maybe somebody will say, hey, come get that 100 assist for us. Maybe, or he may think about the very nice studio in New York where MLS 360 is filmed every Saturday. I think they've got wonderful beverages and food set out, and you get to stay in the uh, nice yeah, surroundings I, I for it, six I, hours. I see enough of the behind-the-scenes footage. He's always juggling a ball. He wants to be out there. We, we know. And something on here, though, for Capo. Sliding challenge put in by Lucas Ender. Ariaga plays it back. Good pressure from Capo. Slid in front, and it's all the way through the six. Tantalizing opportunity for the home side. Seagal for the back post. An adventure for Rowe. It's bouncing in front. Saved by Rowe. Oh and kept my out. gosh. What a save. Up from Rowe to keep this out. Incredible. So Rowe will be disappointed himself with the first one to let it go by. But to get back and keep that out. Oh my goodness. For Scalso, didn't go toward it immediately. Had to get back on side first. Oh, didn't lean that line of pressure. Numbers here for Capo. Looking all the way across and it sneaks through. Numbers again in the middle, play to the back post, off the post! Oh, how is it not 1-0 Capo? Capo coming ever so close. Good job of cutting this back to the top of the six and Brian Rowe just smart with their defending in central positions. Center forward to being unaccounted for for Capo FC inside the box and they are living on borrowed time right now. This one slipped through to the far post. And around that post. Flag will stay down. Out wide for Capo FC. They don't have the numbers this time. Far post is open. Needs a better delivery in the end. Not sure if that was meant to be a shot or a cross. It was 50% of both and 100% ineffective. And I feel like you guys play bounce like ideas and like, things off each other. Orange County put in a couple, they opened up, they ended up with five, not as lopsided as the score indicated. But moments where they could have scored in that first half, didn't take advantage, and it went against them. Robbed once by Brian Rowe, hit the post once, had a couple of other near tap-ins that didn't miss by much. And we begin half number two. Will 45 more be enough? Will we need 30 more beyond that? Will we need penalties beyond beyond that? You wonder when Des Moines might start dipping into the bench. You know that Capo really can't. Remember, only three available bodies on the bench, and they used one sub already in the first half. The giveaway. Something may be on here. That's Cole Symes leads the attack. Symes goes for a goal. It took a wrong turn in the air. Because Brian Rowe was going to his right, had to come back left. And again, that spell of time in that club's history saw them get to the Open Cup final with Kleshton. Great ball into space here. Harmon puts the shoulder down, goes for goal. The opener for Des Moines.
Just what this game needed. Inside the first eight minutes. And it's a quick fire strike from the men. Paul Henschke, Leroy Enzugusi, the two who come on. Comes on for Capo FC, their final substitution. Comes in for William Linus. So they are fresh out of subs. What a chance to equalize anyway, and it's converted. Parker Scalzo ties it up at one in the 66th minute. Some life for Capo FC. Entry pass does just enough to get beyond. And Scalzo, tremendous concentration to track this out of the corner's eye. He takes a little peek, and he sees Brian Rowe is out, and it was just that little bit of look. This is where concentration is really key. Question takes the free kick quickly. See if it sparks something here for Des Moines. And Zagusi, the substitute, and Zagusi. King wants to throw it out quickly for Vickers. What does Taylor do when she sings the man? Stockport County and Bury as well, and also a few other notable moments along the way. Went viral as he was dubbed the Plain Bay when a passenger caught him chatting and live tweeted the whole thing. By the time they landed, it had gone viral. Found themselves on Good Morning America, and we've got all sorts of craziness happen in U.S. Open Cup after dark. And it's out wide for Holden. Delivers. It's loose in front. And Zagusi denied by Nate King. Nearly moments after he came into the match, you would hold it with an assist. And there's the whistle to end regulation. Just in case you haven't had enough U.S. Open Cup soccer today, we've got another half hour for you, plus potentially penalties. Rolls it out quickly. Heavy tackle. Yellow card, and that's Danny Siegel. So he's off. That'll change things drastically. Now down to 10 men at Capo FC. Scalzo delivers, looking for Vickers. <laughs> that was a risky play, or a confident one. Two ways of looking at it. Hey, Kurtz with that confidence in the 18 to make that turn. Not realizing quite what was behind him, or maybe he did. He seemed a little too close for comfort in that spot of the field. Now from distance, that's off the goal post, the NFL, or high school football goal post, rather. It was almost barred down, but wrong bar. That would have been something special. Decision was made to cut inside, and I think that hit behind the goal line with the backspin. Yeah. It didn't matter, obviously, hitting the football goal post out of play, but for a moment there. And there's no... <laughs> no VAR. No VAR, so good thing the referees. <laughs> good thing the referee saw it the way it happened. And coming up in the final minute now on the first extra time, Henschke... Intercepted. Shockey. Apple starting to find a footing here. It slipped through for Scalzo. He has their goal. Parker Scalzo goes for goal. Row with the soft hands. Question. Josh is so fast he outran the camera. <laughs> Holden goes down. Oh, 
And that'll do it for the first extra time. Still level at one goal apiece, but no longer level in terms of the men being played out there. Is Will it be 15 minutes and then we go home or 15 minutes and then kicks from 12 yards out? It's Des Moines one, it's Capo one. It's the second day of the first round of the US Open Cup. And we have given you an extra half an hour. Fortuitously to him. Well done from Ewan. He's on again, Holden's on if Inzaguzzi finds him. Inzaguzzi lays it off. Ewan Holden tried to get it back to that left foot instead of just having to go. Quickly taken throw. Henschke turns, Henschke hits it, saved! Rebound is put in! Des Moines goes ahead! It's the substitute, Leroy Nzigusi! Henschke's gonna turn around and get this shot off quickly. It's a wonderful save from Nate King, he just cannot push it wide. Nzigusi first to react. With your voice, huh? <laughs> I just said it before you said it, that's all. Definitely wouldn't be the first time that my loud mouth has also woken somebody up either. <laughs> well, no matter where you are, whether you're on the East Coast approaching 2 a.m., on the West Coast, also approaching midnight as well at this point. Whether you're in Cincinnati, whether you're somewhere in Dallas, wherever you are watching this Open Cup match, it's 2-1 Des Moines, and it's what makes this tournament so special. And it's not over yet. Rome missed it! Scalso! We're level again! Now the referee just gave a signal indicating he was waving it off, but then he pointed to midfield. And I believe the goal is being awarded. Des Moines was arguing offside, not given. The point centrally was to midfield, level again. A hope and a prayer. Sent long. And there's the whistle to end it. After all that, we will decide it in a shootout. Oh, runoff coming from Kurtz. At the edge of the area. Kurtz goes with power and he converts. Confident penalty from Bay Kurtz. Solid approach. Nate King guesses correctly, but not much you can do. It's got the right height, right pace. Solid start for Des Moines Menace. Cameron Vickers steps up. He subbed on in the first half due to an injury for Capo FC. Not a starter in this one, but he has basically played starter minutes. Vickers against Brian Rowe. Stutter from Vickers, a hesitation, and he drives it past Rowe. One, one after one. Carbon copy from Bay Kurtz. Goes high to his left and Wonderful penalty, keeping us level. You and Holden will take the second. Short run up for Holden against King. Holden sneaks it through. Seemed like Nate King got a fingertip on it. Not enough to keep it out. Advantage back to Des Moines. Nothing less than what you'd expect from you and Holden. It's been there, done that. A long hiatus. Turns back to the field of play and the class has never left him. Steps up and delivers when needed the most. Full Symes will step up now. Productive evening in the midfield, patrolling for Capo FC. And Brian Rowe, the former MLS keeper with LA Galaxy, come up with a stop that'll help Des Moines Menace. 
It's Symes, and there was some confusion there. The whistle blew. Rode thought that Symes went early. It's gonna stand, and it's 2-2. He started the approach and the whistle went after Symes had already started running forward. That is questionable. But if you're going by the technicality, the run started, the whistle happened, the goal struck. Leroy Enzigusi, who thought he had the match winning goal in the 117th minute. Now steps up for a penalty against Nate King. Still exchanging words with Brian Rowe, who's not exactly where the referee wants him to be standing. I wonder if it's just freezing his teammate now in Enzigusi. After a long delay, a deep breath. Enzigusi converts anyway. Five for five combined so far, these teams. And Zagusi caps off his night with a really good penalty. Influential. Did everything you'd want from a substitute and thought he had the winner, but still was able to compose himself and keep us perfect. 3-2 heading into the bottom of the third. It's Brandon Zambrano now the substitute who steps up. Seeing a theme here, some guys who subbed on for Kappa with maybe fresher legs. Taking these penalties. Long run up from Zambrano. Zambrano. These are some well taken penalties after the length of time we've seen played tonight and the limitations in terms of the subs for Capo FC. Fatigue of the brain, fatigue of the legs, not really showing up in penalties so far. 3 3 through 3. Kyle Owen will step up now for Des Moines. Pressure starts to mount in these moments. Owen, froze the goalkeeper. Nothing Nate King could do. This is where the experience of Brian Rowe, having been in these moments before, can be valuable. All right now you need just one save from your goalkeeper is all you're asking for. And guess who hasn't taken a penalty yet if this save or miss happens here. Dylan Shockey positions the fourth penalty for Capo. If he makes it, we basically enter the sudden death rounds. Shockey, another well taken drilled penalty just inside the post. Everyone better than the last for Capo. Sasha Kleshton will come up and take the fifth for Des Moines. Against Nate King, he's been the topic of conversation all week and all night. Now in the fifth round of penalties, 4-4, it's just about sudden death. Kleshton tucks it away with class. King guessed right, but couldn't keep it out. And now a save or a miss would win it for Des Moines. The script writers wouldn't let Sasha be the one to miss it in the shootout, would they? <laughs> it was a close one. One of the script writers say about this one, Parker Scalzo had both of the equalizing goals for Capo FC. Against Rowe to keep Capo FC alive. Parker Scalzo misses Des Moines on a penalty by Sasha Kleshton is through to the second round of the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. The dream continues for Des Moines men.